What we're going to be doing today is talking about something called effective rate. And the idea here is that we want to be able to make comparisons between uh, different types of terms, right? So you can, you can think of them as either saving or loan, but we want to compare different interests. And if it was just an interest rate, and we would have just the one number to compare, but we also have the different compounding periods. Okay. So if we start with like an easy example, if you know, I say, all right, what, what's a better deal? 6.3% compounded quarterly or 6.3 compounded monthly. Okay. And you know, when I say better deal, we, we sort of have to be, you know, careful about which one we want, right? If I'm if I'm saving money, I want the most interest. If I'm borrowing money, I want the least. You know, but right now we'll, we'll just say, all right, suppose that we're saving money. Well, then if I compound more often, then I'll be getting my interest sooner and more often. And so I'll be getting interest on interest more quickly. Okay. So obviously the compounded monthly would be better. But what if the compounded monthly has a slightly smaller rate? What's better, 6.2% monthly, 6.3% quarterly? Okay. Well, it's a little bit more complicated, right? The monthly is better than quarterly, but the 6.3 is better than the 6.2. So you know, we have to figure out which, you know, which one wins out here. What's, what's the balance, right? So that's what uh, effective rate is going to be for, right? This uh, uh, effective rate is going to give us a way to compare something like 6.2 monthly versus 6.3 quarterly to see which one um, is, is a better deal in our situation. The way that we do this, the effective rate is going to be like what would be the percent uh, increase in your money over one year. Or another way to think about it is what would be the equivalent simple interest rate that would give me the same amount of money? Okay. So, so that's what we're looking at. And uh, we have a formula here. Unfortunately, that built-in financial tool in our calculator, um, it doesn't do effective rate directly. I'll show you how you can use it to do effective rate, but we have to end up subtracting one at the end. It doesn't give it to us automatically. Okay. But you'll notice with effective rate, I have less things that I'm talking about. I don't need to know how much I'm borrowing or saving because I'm just comparing the terms, which, you know, which one's a better interest rate. So I really just need to know the interest rate and how often it's compounded. Okay. So it's less information that we're inputting. Okay. So, um, Let's go ahead and, and skip right to an example and, and, and take a look and see what we end up with. So I want to compare a 6.3% interest rate that's quarterly to a 6.2 interest rate that's monthly to see what's better for a savings account. So which one gives me a higher amount of interest after one year? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to break this up. We'll say, okay, here's my 6.3% quarterly. Okay. And over on the right, we'll look at the 6.2% monthly. Okay. So what I want to do is look at the effective rate for each one. So if I plug into the formula, I'm going to have 1 plus 0 0.063. Since this is quarterly, the N is 4. Okay. So if I type that formula into my calculator, uh, and I'm going to write out all the decimals here, I get 0 0.064. Five zero four zero six four five. Okay. Now let's look at the six point two percent monthly. So here my effective rate. Right, I put in the point zero six two because it's six point two percent interest. Uh, it's monthly, so the N is twelve. So here we get 0 
317. Okay, so if I look at these, um, here the 6.3% quarterly is going to be approximately the same as a 6.45% interest, uh, like simple interest. Okay, so here my effective rate is 6.45%. If I round to a couple decimal places, okay, over here it's going to be 6.38% if I round to a couple decimal places. So I can see that the 6.3% quarterly wins out by a tiny bit. So that's how we can make comparisons is, is by doing this uh, effective rate business. Now, what I wanna do is also show you how you can use your calculator to get these numbers uh, if you're using that, that built-in um, finance app, okay? So what I do is I hit the app, finance, TBM solver. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna just treat this as, as being one year, okay? So if I'm looking at quarterly, Right, this would be just four times one or four. Okay, my interest rate is 6.3%. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we just start with $1. Okay, and the PO, the you know, payments per year is four. Okay, so then what I end up with is a dollar uh, and 6.45 cents. So if I just subtract off the dollar I started with it, it sort of gives me what the percentage increase is. Okay. So what, what I would do if I wanna use my calculator to do this is when I look at my final value, I have to ignore the, or, or take away a one from, from that uh, final value. And, that, and that'll give me my interest, right? I'll get the same 64504 that we had, okay? And if I look at monthly, we say, okay, this is gonna be a 12 was 6.2 and I changed this one to a 12. Okay. And now here I can see if I ignore the one, I have my uh, 0 0.06379, right? So 0, sorry, 0 0.06379, yeah, 0 0.06379. Oh, I have a dollar. Okay, so the, the finance app can still get it. It's just not as, as clean because I have to like subtract a number off, you know, a one off. Okay, but otherwise it still works.